I'm Anil Kumar. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Let me thank all the viewers and subscribers for watching my videos. You have really made this site very interesting and useful. Thanks for subscribing. We now have more than 100,000 subscribers. Here's a request from one of our subscribers who wants to understand how to isolate a variable when a quality equation is involved. So I've taken up an example with variety which can help you to understand this particular topic. So we have three examples here. The first one, y equals to 4t square is relatively straightforward. And then we have two uh, real life situation examples where distance is equal to d. d is equal to minus 5t square plus 20t plus 1. t is greater than or equal to 0. And the last one here is d equals to vt plus half a t square plus b where t is greater than or equal to 0. So the last equation is very familiar projectile motion equation so frequently used, correct? Let us see how to isolate t in such conditions where a quadratic equation is involved. Let's begin with the very first one which is y equals to 4t square. I'll appreciate if you could also solve along with me and check with your solution. You can always pause the video in between. So why is 4t square? We need to isolate t. That should not be difficult. We can write this as 4t square equals to y or t square equals to one fourth of y. And now we'll do square root. So we'll do square root. And within the square root, we have both these terms, correct? So at times I've seen students forget putting y under the square root. That could be one mistake. The other mistake is that when you do square root, you have to write plus and minus, correct? We have not given any restrictions for t here. So it could be positive or negative value. Now we get the answer and we get t as plus minus square root of 4 is 2. So plus minus half square root of y. Doesn't make sense to you. So that becomes the solution for the first part. And now let us see how to solve part B and C. To isolate the variable t from this given equation, which is d equals to minus 5t square plus 20t plus 1, where t is greater than or equal to 0. See, this time t is greater than or equal to 0, so we'll only take the positive value. Correct? Okay. Now, since t is uh, involved with two terms, how do we isolate? The method to do it is to complete the squares. We need to write this equation in the vertex form. And then we can isolate. Is that clear to you? So these are the steps involved. You can always pause the video, try it out, and then look into my suggestions. Now let us see how to complete the squares. So we are given d as equal to minus 5t square plus 20t plus 1. We'll take the coefficient of t square common. So within the brackets, we get t square plus becomes minus, since we have taken minus 5. Dividing 20 by minus 5 gives you 4, right? So we get 4 and t plus 1. We'll keep this one separate. See, I took only the, the coefficient of the term t square common, right? Not t. Now, within this bracket, you have these two terms, t square minus 4t. We'll do half of this coefficient, which is 4. Half of this is 2. We'll add and subtract 2 square. That is the step involved in completing the squares, right? So this is the, the technique of completing squares. So you do half of this coefficient, and add and subtract its square. Now, what you notice is that we have a perfect square, right? So I could now write this as minus 5 t minus and 2 whole square. And minus 2 square is minus 4. I should have written plus 1 also, right? Plus 1. Now see, 
these three terms t minus 2 whole square t square minus 2ab plus 2 square do you see how they are related so that is the step very important to complete the squares now we could actually isolate our variable let's first open this bracket so when you open this we get minus 5 t minus 2 whole square minus and minus becomes plus 5 times 4 is 20 plus 1 and we could write this as minus 5 t minus 2 whole square plus 21 so this is what d is equal to right now we need to find t we got only one t which we can easily isolate right that is we got our vertex form now we need to isolate so let's bring uh, this term to the right and d to the to the right and this to the left so we get 5 t minus 2 whole square equals to 21 minus t is that clear to you this was all equal to d right so we brought this to the left and d to the right now we can divide 21 by 5 so we get t minus 2 whole square equals to 21 minus d over 5 and we can now write down uh, t value we'll take it to the right side so let me rewrite this t minus 2 whole square is equal to 21 minus d over 5 so we'll square root both sides so we get t minus 2 equals to square root of 21 minus d over 5 clear we'll take only the positive value since t is greater than equal to 0 so not the negative values and then we can write t equals to 2 plus square root of 21 minus d over 5 where t is greater than or equal to 0 as our answer. Is that clear to you? So these are the steps involved when you really want to isolate a variable from a quadratic equation. So completing the squares is the key to do this. We are going to take now a general example so that you could isolate from any quadratic equation. So that is the last part. This is the general equation. We need to isolate the variable t. d is equal to vt plus half at square plus b, where t is greater than or equal to 0. To isolate, the first step will be we need to complete squares. Now, this is a general method which can be adopted for solving any quadratic equation. So, let's see how to complete the squares. Let me first rewrite this with the highest coefficient. So, that is kind of standard form, right? Since it is half A, uh, we normally do not have any fractions involved in the standard form. That's why I'm saying kind of standard form plus p right so t is greater than or equal to 0 so to isolate t first step is to complete the squares and to complete the squares we'll now factor the coefficient of t squared now in this particular case coefficient of t squared is half a so we'll write down half a here and within the brackets we have t squared plus v over half a it looks complicated but it's not that if you have the values it will be as simple as the previous example okay so this is half a and here let me simplify this a bit so when you take it it becomes 2v over a right so plus 2v over a times t plus p next step is to take a number which is half of this Half of this is V over E, right? At present, we'll add and subtract V over A whole square, right? So that will help us to complete the squares. Now, we could write this as half A T. Since all of them are plus here, we'll take plus here. This We are looking into this sign, right? And V over A whole square now the last term here is v square over a square 
plus d. We can now open the bracket. So we get d equals to half a t, oh sorry, half a t plus v over a whole square minus. So here when you multiply, one of the a's get cancelled, right? So we get half v square over a and then we have plus t. So that becomes the equation in vertex form. So this value is a constant, right? Oh, this was b not, uh, sorry, this is b not t. Yeah. So now this part is a constant, right? So we'll rearrange. Let me do it on the right side. Bringing this term to the left, we are left with this, which is half of a t plus v over a whole square equals to d plus this half of v square over a minus b, right? Now, t plus v over a whole square is equal to 2 over a times d plus half v square over a minus b. Well, square root, so we get t plus v over a equals to square root. We'll take only the positive value since t is greater than 0. 2 over a d minus v square over 2a minus b. So I'm not combining these terms. You could always do that. And now t is equal to taking this to the right side. We have square root of 2 over a d minus v square over 2a minus b minus v over a. So in a way, we have isolated t, right? You could always simplify this expression. It will remind you of the quadratic formula. Correct? So, so let me write down the quadratic formula here also. If in general, you have y equals to ax square plus bx plus c, in that case, you can find the value of x equating this to 0 as x is equal to minus p plus minus square root of b square minus 4ac over 2a. So, so the equation has been isolated when you solve for 0 and you get this kind of a result. Perfect. That can be derived by completing the squares just as we did. So that should be a hint for you. How do we isolate t? So if you do not want to go through all the steps involved, in that case, you could sometimes use this method to find the value of x, right? So that could be one of your solutions. But anyway, I hope you've learned how to isolate t from a quadratic equation, especially when it is kind of complicated given in standard form. Feel free to write your comments, share your views, and if you like and subscribe to my videos, that'd be great. Thanks for your time and all the best.